This is actually the first time I've ever drawn Salem's canon design in any medium. All the other times, I always made up some new outfit to put her in, and even those instances were few and far between. I really don't draw her or talk about her very often. From the outside looking in, it may seem like I don't care about this character, but that's actually not true. I do like Salem, and that's why she has a central role to play in the Neverfell AU. There are two major changes I made to Salem's character. The first is that I actually decided on a solid personality for her. She is evil, but in a very calm, controlled way. This Salem feels no need to roar and scream and act scary, or even to get angry most of the time, because she is secure in the knowledge that she's the most powerful being on Remnant. Essentially, all she needs to say to anyone who works for her is this. I'm the queen of all evil, my rule is absolute, and I will never die. If you dare disobey me, I will send my hellish monsters to tear you limb from limb. No matter where you try to run, I will find you. I have literally all the time in the world to hunt you down and make you wish you were never born. On the other hand, if you do what I say, everything will be chill and we'll get along great. I'm not going to hurt you or yell at you or anything. If we make a deal, I'll hold up my end of the bargain as long as you hold up yours. And that's really all you need to know about this relationship. And just having her be candid like this shows you one of the bigger reasons why her followers probably choose to work for her. Despite being evil, she is a pillar of consistency and control in a hostile and uncertain world. As long as you follow her orders, she'll approve of you. As long as you get her what she needs, she'll get you what you need. If you're ever in a conversation with her, you know exactly where you stand. And you know that she won't lie to you because she doesn't need to. She has so much physical control over the world around her that she doesn't need to bother with information control. You can think whatever you want and uncover as many secrets as you can find. But at the end of the day, she can still send a grim horde to maul you to death at the snap of her fingers. In this way, she's kind of like a foil to Ozpin. The two of them are equal and opposite flavors of abusive parental figures. Ozpin will manipulate you into doing what he wants through misinformation, make you doubt your own thoughts and feelings, and prey on your fears and weaknesses to teach you a lesson. His methods are very complex and individualized. Salem, on the other hand, has just one essential rule that goes for everybody. Do what I say or I kill you. She'll say it in a nice, motherly way, which in itself is technically a form of manipulation. But the underlying emphasis is always on clear expectations and clear consequences. That isn't to say that she never indulges in an occasional convoluted scheme, or that she never lies to anyone ever. It's just that she tends to reserve those tactics for her actual enemies, people who she wants to get rid of, or people she wants to use for one purpose and then toss out like garbage. Unlike Ozpin, she doesn't play puppeteer with people who support her and work for her on a regular basis. You could argue that she has more respect for her followers than he does, because at least she treats them like tools rather than toys. It's really a matter of opinion. Anyway, the second major change I made to her character is to give her an actual clear goal, which is super simple and easy to understand, and which most of her followers are already aware of. Here it is. Salem wants to end the world. No two ways about it, that's what she wants. Now, in Neverfell, the relics and maidens don't exist. All she has at her disposal are the Grimm. And Grimm used to be super rare on Remnant. The God of Darkness never made that many, and back when humanity was wiped out, most of the ones that were left just dissolved, since they had no purpose without negative emotions to hunt down. So, Salem's method of ending the world is to simply make more Grimm. While she's sitting around in her dark castle, that's what she's doing. Creating new Grimm, new types of Grimm, stronger Grimm, Grimm that can make more of themselves, Grimm with special abilities, and recently, Grimm that can become more intelligent by fusing with humans and faunas. It's kind of like her personal hobby, a way to end the world while expressing her creativity. And if she continues making them, eventually their numbers will grow large enough that population dynamics will run their course and humanity will inevitably go extinct. Now why are Salem's followers okay with this idea? Because, like most people in real life, they have the ingrained notion that the distant future is not their problem, so they don't have to care. I mean, no one really knows when the Grimm will overrun the planet. It could be a hundred years from now, or it could be a thousand years from now, or it could be ten thousand years from now. Salem's not in any hurry to make it happen, she doesn't seem to care how long it takes. And at this moment in time, humanity still seems to have a handle on the situation. So, everyone in Salem's inner circle can justifiably think, by the time she does end the world, I'll be long dead, so I might as well reap the benefits of doing her dirty work right now. This frees them up to act more like a classic rogues gallery of villains that you see in more lighthearted series, 
with each member moving forward with their own unique goals. For example, Hazel repeatedly tries to kill Ozpin to make him pay for what happened to his sister, and Watts repeatedly tries to kill Ironwood for rejecting his genius, and he also tries to kill Penny for representing the work of his former rival. Whenever they show up in the story, their actions are personal and tied directly to their backstories. Salem isn't their motivation. She's just the benevolent goddess who makes it possible for them to carry out their actual motivations. And she chose them specifically because their desires were beneficial to her plans. Which I think is a much better role for her to take in the story. She simply puts the right person in the right place at the right time, strategically directing their anger towards her targets. Now, in Ospin's video, I explained my plans to give him a redemption arc and how it would work. But at this point in time, I'm not sure I want to do something like that with Salem. Her issues run a little deeper. The story of the Lost Fable still exists in Neverfell, and I rewrote it to make it clear that it was the Brother God's negligence and lack of compassion that turned one woman's grief into the seeds of supervillainy. She seeks to destroy humanity as an act of rebellion against the gods who created it, and as a way to prove to the few people who'll be left at the end, Oz and her children, that she was right all along. If she can succeed in destroying Remnant, the gods will have to come back to confront her again, and then the rest of her family will finally understand that they live in a hell dimension ruled by beings who don't care about anything but themselves, and that the only way out is to take them down. Of course, things aren't going to get to that point in the story. I think it would be better if Salem's curse was actually broken. And although it's a little dark, this is my idea. Salem will meet her end when she finally succeeds in killing Ozpin. She'll arrive at Beacon, there'll be a big final boss fight with all the characters involved, and everything will still have the usual slightly comedic tone. Salem will get into a fight with Oz as expected, and during their intense wizard battle, suddenly, unexpectedly, maybe due to some magic accident, she actually kills him. It's never really been one of her goals to kill him. All she wanted was to harass him, punish him, make him miserable enough to fall into despair alongside her. And as she watches him die, she realizes that, to her surprise, she doesn't even regret killing him. She stopped caring about him as a person a long time ago. The Ozma she once loved enough to defy the gods has been dead to her for centuries. And in a twisted sort of way, she's already accepted it and moved past it. As per the terms of her curse, she finally passes on in that moment, probably kicking and screaming all the way, since it means she will never fulfill her dream of dethroning the gods. And right on cue, the brother gods reappear to witness this. Seeing that Salem finally ended up doing what they wanted her to do renews their faith in humanity, and they decide to start hanging out in Remnant again to rebuild the world they had before, whether the people of Remnant want them to or not. But that's a story for another time. Anyway, thank you for watching, like, subscribe, whatever, and check out my coffee page gallery to see the finished pictures in these videos. Till next time!